Okay, what's up guys? This is the FLIR CM275 clamp-on multimeter. Okay, this meter I've been using for about a month now and I'm really starting to enjoy the features. So let's get in to some of the features and I'll show you some field footage of me using it in the actual field. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Harago.com, a trades-only platform helping you find the right job or the right candidate. Harago.com, best in trade. Okay, so let's go through some of the basic features on the dial here. So from left to right, the first one here is the flex clamp adapter setting. So we can get a, a clamp basically and we can attach it to the bottom here where our leads go. So we can use a flex clamp outside or remote from the meter. Here's our low Z function for those ghost voltages. Voltage, impedance or resistance. We have our capacitor for microfarad, our diodes, and our amperage. So I've set the meter to volts here, so I can show you that turning on the light, pretty simple. You just hold it down, you hear it beep, you see the flashlight up on the screen, and there's the light right there. So we have a flashlight built into this meter, which is very, very cool. Staying on voltage, we can hit the mode button and we can change to DC and then we can change to frequency so we can actually measure the frequency, which is pretty cool. If we go back to the beginning to voltage here, we can change the range. So we instead of two decimal places, we're only going to have the one decimal place there. Now what sets this meter apart from any regular multimeter is the fact that we can do thermal imaging with it and the way we do this is we turn the meter on I just put it to volts because it's the easiest setting to get to and we hold down this blue button with the FLIR logo on it hold it down and then boom it starts to time up the thermal imaging camera okay so the meter is all fired up and the infrared camera is all warmed up and if we point the crosshairs we get a reading from the top left corner there now you can see that my heating is on, on the dash, and there's the stick shift there. It's a lot cooler. We point it back at the dash, we can see where the heat's coming up. And if we wanna take a screenshot of that, it's very easy to do. We hit this camera button right here, and in a couple of seconds, you will see a sample of the picture show up right there. There it is. So we've just taken a screenshot of that. Now that's saved into the meter. So I'm gonna show you some footage in the field, okay? of me using the actual meter. But before I do, I wanted to show you something pretty cool. So I have it set to volts, and I have the meter leads plugged in. Now, if I take the meter leads and I start to move them, it starts to show a voltage reading there. Now, I got a hold of FLIR, and I asked them what's going on here, and the answer they gave me was, was a super cool answer. This meter is so sensitive that when you move the leads through the Earth's natural magnetic field, it actually picks up voltage. I thought that was pretty cool. But once, and I verified this, once you put these leads on something and you're reading voltage of an actual appliance, you don't, you don't see this whatsoever. One thing that you can do is if you like, you can put it to low Z. And when it fires up and you do this, the problem is gone if that kind of freaks you out. But I just wanted to give you that update so you guys, when you fire up the meter and you see that, you know what it's from. Okay, so I'm taking a snapshot thermally of the compressor here. I'm gonna get in closer to the meter. So now you can see that there. You can see at the top, the crosshairs is reading 140-ish degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that purple line moving across, that's actually, that's actually the suction line there. So we see the difference in temperature by the difference in color. Now, if we look at the bottom right corner, you can see where the discharge line enters. It's actually glowing white. So if we go down there and we point the crosshairs there, we instantly get a higher reading of the temperature. So pretty cool, we can see the hot and cold spots of this little compressor. This can help with troubleshooting and it can help with maintenance as well. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so I have the dial turned to amps here. Okay, and we're taking an amp draw. We put the clamp around the wire here. There's power and there's common 120 line in and we have common as well and this is a small compressor for a chest freezer and we're getting a snapshot of the amp draw at 0.61 amps okay so this new defrost termination switch slash fan time delay 
I'm going to check it at room temperature and then check it against the old one I pull out of the machine I think I'm having problems with. I'm going to use the FLIR CM275 to do that on the ohm settings. Now the first thing you should probably do is touch your leads together and make sure that we're getting resistance across there. Okay, so we want to go from brown to black. Brown appears to be the common here. So I'm going to go from brown to black and we get an open reading on the meter. And if I go from brown to red, it's closed. So I'm gonna double check the one I pull out of the system to see if it reads the same once it gets to room temperature. Okay, so I have the old one out. All right, and I held it in my hand for a bit, warmed it up and it's kinda warmed up to room temperature now and I actually heard it click. So let me check here. So between brown and black we'll go again. And we have an open reading. And if we go between brown and red, we have a closed reading like the new one. But that doesn't mean to say that inside the freezer at that temperature, those extreme temperatures that this thing is not acting up somehow. So we're going to go up to the roof and recheck our situation we were having up there with the time clock. Again, now that the clicks on has been changed, and we'll go from there. Those are the basic features of the meter, but it also has some advanced features like VFD mode, inrush current, data logging capabilities. I just wanted to go over some of the, the basic features and show you what the meter includes. But when you purchase the meter and you get into all of these other things that are pretty in depth, you need to go through and learn these things so you can put them to good use. But in a nutshell, guys, that is the FLIR CM275. And the fact that it has a thermal image camera built in is a complete game changer when it comes to clamp-on multimeters. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Happy HVAC.